In the last 2016 Skyrim modding guide, we improved the NPC artificial intelligence. Now in episode 30, it's time to add some NPCs to Skyrim in order to up the population. We've got the big mods, some little ones, and a couple honorable mentions to round out the choices. Both interesting and inconsequential NPCs, roving patrols, some horses, and more. Hey guys and gals, this is Cal from Dirty Weasel, and welcome back to the 2016 Skyrim Modding Guide. You know, in the last episode, we did Immersive Citizens AI Overhaul, and basically that controlled all of the Citizens AI, or Artificial Intelligence, to make them a little smarter. And in this episode, we're going to be adding some NPCs to make it all kind of make sense. So, you know, last episode, AI, this episode, let's bring in some more NPCs to control them with. All right, so let's get started. We've got some big ones to take a look at. We've got some smaller ones to take a look at. We have some personal choices that I think you'll find interesting that I'm not gonna be using myself, but I wanted to show you anyways. Let's go to the internet and we will show you things, uh, what we've got. And the first thing we've got for you is Interesting NPCs by T Chris Takahashi. You know, this is probably the biggest and probably one of the best mods available in a lot of different ways. It doesn't just add NPCs. It's a quest mod. It's a follower mod and it adds NPCs. So, you know, it's had how many total downloads? 2.6 million total downloads since it was added in 2012 and it is mod number 8429 it shows you it's been around for quite some time. When you scroll down and take a look at it, it's going to tell you a lot about interesting NPCs. It adds 250 voiced NPCs, 50 quests, 25 followers with location-based commentary, 15 marriageable NPCs, just a ton of different things. And it adds so much to any load order, I can't go any game without it because it's just so much fun. And I'm always finding new people to talk to, and that's what I like talking to is people in-game. Don't ask me why, I don't like killing people so much, I like talking to people. So, you know, here's the installation instructions. We'll just go, to, go ahead and show you the installation with this. This is probably pretty easy to get through. Compatibility, there are some compatibility issues with this. Uh, but we will go show you where some of that stuff is when we start talking about it a little more in depth. Let's go to the file section. We'll show that to you first. You can see there is the main files, 3D NPCs. And you need to download that manually because it is so big. So you'll need to get that and download it manually to your desktop. And then you'll just drag it and drop it in. I'll show you where to, you know, how to do that exactly. You have the update. If you're using an older version, 3.1 to 3.2, because this is version 3.2. It was done in July of 2016. He's always updating. Then you have optional files. The 3D NPC Hearthfire patch allows you to move mod spouses to Hearthfire homes. If you use the Hearthfire Homes and want to move a mod, a spouse, you can go ahead and do that. You have Dawnguard meshes for vampire NPCs. Dawnguard compatible face gen data for vampire eye interesting NPCs to avoid gray face bug. Install the main file first, then overwrite with this. You know, if you're having the gray face bug, I would go ahead and come back and get this and then merge it in. But if you're not having the problem, don't worry about it. You have also miscellaneous files you have alternate locations if you're using live another life at hardfire lakeview manor expansions don't install mid-game if you already play with npcs for a little while okay you know alternate locations live another life that's very popular you may need to get this 3d npc don't call me dragonborn patch for use on non dovahkiin characters using alternate start mods to be used only on a new game. Do not install mid-game if you've been playing with 3D NPC installed for a while. And this is going to be kind of a case-by-case -case basis. We'll get into installation on this. You know, most of my characters aren't Dragonborn anymore, so this may be a good option for you, but I just want to point that out to you. You have 3D NPC, Dawnguard, Realistic Teeth. There's a patch for that. Realistic Teeth for all of them. So you have all of the NPCs and then the Dawn Guard specific ones if you think they need to have changes. Followers wear default outfit. Use if you want followers to keep their vanilla 3D NPC outfits if you have mods all terrain, blah, blah, blah. Shez results Sholden. This is a whole Holden. 3D NPC Winterhold mods compatibility patch. You know, 
Mage College and Winterhold, that may be something you need to get. EFF patch by Newsbar. This is for extensible follower framework. So if you plan on using EFF, here's a patch to make 3D NPC work with EFF. Nerdy's Thief Pack patch, okay? ESP replaced for this. And TK Children, if you're using TK Children, you'll need to get this patch as well. So there's a bunch of patches, and most of them you're just going to kind of merge them into 3D NPC, but we'll get into that in a little bit. I want to show you another website for 3D NPC or interesting NPCs, and that is Chris Takahashi's modding and blog, Interesting NPCs. It is 3dnpc.com. I think it has, you know, basically a repository for all of his thoughts, his different mods and whatever else. But the important stuff for us is go to the wiki, Skyrim, let's click on that first, and it's going to give you a bunch of different things. So this is the NPC locations, the different followers, the quest, the marriage, the books, and the bard songs. Okay, this is a good bit of information on, you know, some of the things that you may have questions about, about the interesting NPCs for Skyrim. And you say, well, I don't know about this quest or this follower. Just want to point that out to you and some interesting stuff. So now we are into Mod Organizer. Now, if you have 3D NPC and you have, let's say, a archive, you know, I've got some stuff going on in here. All you would do is grab this. If this was interesting NPC, if we're going to use, for example, and drag it and drop it in to the Downloads tab on the right pane. That's all you need to do it, and it'll eventually populate into this thing. You would then right click on it and query info. I don't have that option right now because they're all been queried already. And then you can go ahead and have it there permanently in your downloads directory so you can have it. So, installation on this is fairly simple interesting NPCs, manual, right click, set data directory, and you have all this stuff. Go ahead and click OK, and this is going to take a while because it is a huge mod. All right, we're finally done. That took a long time. So you see it down here at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and activate it. There is one plugin for this, and you can see all the way down there. This is where you'll see it when you first install the mod. It's going to be all the way down here at the bottom, but that's for right now. Now, on the downloads, we're going to talk about this, and this is the 3D NPC Don't Call Me Dragonborn. Patch for use on non-Dova King characters using alternate start mods. Most of the other patches for 3D NPC are mergeable. So we're going to double-click this in, and we're going to show you what we've got. Manual, right-click, set data directory. So you've got a readme, we don't need that. you got scripts, sound, and 3D NPC Don't Call Me Dragonborn.esp. Now, here's the thing. Most patches, I would normally just merge them right into interesting NPCs and call it a day. In this case, I think you're probably better off installing it separately, and I'll, I'll get into, into why in just a little bit. So let's drop down. Don't call me Dragonborn is fine. That's, that'll work for me, and click OK. And we're just going to ignore that update. So you can see it's overriding 3D NPC. And this is, this is the reason why, is that if you were to merge this in to interesting NPCs, you have information in this one. This is Don't Call Me Dragonborn. You have the file tree. Remember, it's got scripts and sound. If you were to merge it into 3D NPC, those scripts and sound would be left in there, and you could disable the, the ESP for it, but the scripts and sound would stay. That may cause an issue. If you are running two consecutive playthroughs, one with that is the Dovahkiin and one that is not the Dovahkiin, this may be a case where you need to go ahead and create a new profile with the name of your character that is not the Dragonborn. So you could have this activated in that profile and but not activated in others. So you get that. So let's say I wanted to manage it and we're going to, let's see, Dirty Weasel. We're going to make a copy. Please enter a name. This would be, let's say, this is Fiona. Fiona's not the Dragonborn. Click OK. Now you have Fiona. 
For Fiona, it would be activated. Let's say for the other Dovahkiin character, the Dirty Weasel Dovahkiin, it would not be cared. It would not be activated. So Fiona, it is. And Dirty Weasel Dovahkiin, it is not. So that's just how that kind of works. I'm going to go ahead and activate it in this case and delete Fiona because I'm not ready to have a mod list with hers completely. Let's manage that better. Fiona and remove it. Are you sure? Yep, I do. All right. So now all we've got is Dirty Weasel and Vanilla. Dirty Weasel, what we want. So for this, you have plugins. You have 3D NPC. Don't call me Dragonborn. And you have 3D NPC. So on this, there are some special considerations. We're going to run loot first to see where things put it. I know exactly what it's going to do, but I wanted to at least show it to you. Didn't know what to do with the patch, but we're going to automatically slat it up. You can see 3D NPC is right there. Now, there's a couple things that we have to worry about. If you remember in the prior video, Immersive Citizens AI Overhaul was right there. One of its special instructions was that 3D NPC had to be above Immersive Citizens. Normally, Loot would do a fine job with it, but because of that special rule, it doesn't do it correctly. There we go. Now, we'll need to lock those in so that the next time we run, because I have other reasons for this now, they need to be locked in so that when you run loot the next time, it's going to go ahead and keep them in this order without moving them around because immersive citizens need to be above Relighting Skyrim and ELE, but because of loot ordering, it just didn't work out that way. As far as the other 3D NPC, don't call me Dragonborn, you can put it anywhere. It doesn't have... Anything as far as masters go other than 3D NPC, so it's going to be anywhere after that. So that's just how you kind of do that. I'm just going to leave it up close to there. As far as this on the priority set, I'm going to leave those alone for right now while we go to our next mod. And that is Inconsequential NPCs by Ripple. It is mod number 36334. It was first introduced in 2013, and what it decided to do is to just add more peoples. Add more pebbles to the game to make it seem more populated. And some talk to you, some don't. Some have lines of dialogue, and some don't. So you can kind of see, here's the list got really big. Here's compatibility of all the different NPC types. In descriptions, you have some videos. And there's optional enhancement module. I want you to read this. This optional enhancement module is included in the file section, and there's a couple different things about this that I wanted to point out. The enhancement module has its own thing. It will automatically equip the NPCs with equipment from Hoth Trooper 44's immersive armor and Winter is Coming Cloaks. So you can go ahead and have these two mods and then the inconsequential NPCs will equip armor and cloaks from those different things. So there is a load order with this. You can see Winter is Clemming, Hoth Trooper 44, then Inconsequential NPCs, and then the Enhancement Module. Inconsequential NPCs, Cutting Room Floor, you can see there's some information on that. And Compatibility Issues, you can click here for more compatibility patches. And you can see there's ones for X-Vision Children, Open Cities, and TK Children, and the Support Patch for Prince and Popper. It's not that important, but I wanted to show that to you. Installation Updating, Installation Instructions, eh, you don't need to know that. I'm going to show that to you right now. So let's scroll back up. I'm going to show you those files that we just talked about. Inconsequential NPCs, you'll need that one. That's the main file. Download that with Manager. And then you have the different Inconsequential NPCs enhancement. You have one for CCOR. That's a Creative Crafting Overhaul Remade, I think. I remember that. I can't remember these acronyms sometimes. And then this is the one for Immersive Armors and Winter is Coming. I need this one because even though I don't have Winter is Coming installed, and secretly, Immersive Armors is there, even though I haven't done a video on it. This is for versions for the, who don't use CCOR. If you're using CCOR, you can get this one, and we'll still use Immersive Armors and Winter is Coming, but it's for use with CCOR. This is the one I want. If you're using CCOR, get that one, and just remember the load order specifications for that. So if you need a, a refresher on that, I'm just going to grab that one right now. Refresh on that yet again, because it is very important that it happens this way. 
Winter is Coming Cloaks, Hot Trooper Armor Compilation, and then the two inconsequential NPCs. Let me go show you what that looks like in Mod Organizer. Download tab, we have Inconsequentials, NPCs. I'm just gonna, I need to hide some things here. There is Inconsequential NPCs. Let's go ahead and install that. Manual, BSA and ESP, looks good. And then the Inconsequential Enhancement Module. Manual is just an ESP. So it is very easy to go ahead and take this out and put it back in depending on your playthrough. Just remember what you're doing on it. And merge it in. So here we go, click it and merge it in. Now when you have that, optional ESPs, you can have the two. Plugins, activate them both. There's a missing master for this, it's Winter is Coming. But I just want to show you the load order on this as well. I have Immersive Armors right there. Hot Trooper 44 Armor Compilation. So for this, it needs to be slid up underneath these right now. There we go. I'm just going to run loot. It's going to probably give me a warning because it doesn't like what I'm doing. So Inconsequentials right there. Immersive Armors, Compilation, Hot Trooper 44. There it is right there. So you can see it moved it down quite a bit, but that's fine as far as that goes. You just have to remember that winter is coming. If you install that later, it needs to be above these as well. Just, of course, refer back to this load order right here once again for that because we don't have winter is coming installed yet i'm just going to go ahead and push the enhancement module up for right now okay we'll get it in soon when i start doing armor and weapons and stuff let's refresh that so it gives rid of that warning there we go goodbye now let's move on to the next mod and that is immersive patrols by scrabulore scrabulore and it's mod number 12977 and this has been a constantly evolving mod. It has expanded quite a bit over time. And what it does is it adds roving bands of Stormcloaks, Thalmor, Imperials, Dongar, Travelers, Merchants, Bandits, Skull, Redoran, Redoran, Reavers, and Reeklings. And they're all over the place. And they can have, it's not just roving bands. They can have a very much kind of Civil War effect on the game. Kind of like Civil War, overhaul, and as much as, see this little map here? These are conflict zones that the immersive patrols will go ahead and fight for. So they will fight back and forth, and there are certain rules to have to apply for that to happen. But you can go ahead and read this mod and get some you know, basic understanding of what's going on. Read the incompatibility mods. Some OBS users have reported aggression issues, okay? Open cities, though it does not crash, is and is fully compatible. It's not recommended as patrols can leak into and attack their enemies in the cities. That's very interesting. Battles and fort capture. This is a feature of the mod. So they will fight over the different forts in these areas that you saw on the map. And if they respawn, they'll come back later on. So when I first read this, it was kind of confusing exactly what was going on when you open up the file section. You have a bunch of different ones, and they're all listed as main files. So you have all the DLC ones. These are This will kind of break it down for you. All the DLC ones, and then you have vanilla if you don't have the DLC. The DLC is for Dawnguard. So Dawnguard and Dragonborn DLC. This is DLC aggressive. Enemy Civil War patrols added by this mod will attack the player on site. So if you're part of the Stormcloak faction, the Imperials will attack you on sight. If you're a vampire, the Dawnguard will attack you. You have Civil War Overhaul only. If you are running Civil War Overhaul, you want this version of it. It is aggressive, and the Civil War NPCs use vanilla factions. Thalmor and Stormcloak aggression fixed. I'm not a big fan of Civil War Overhaul, so I can say I don't, don't need that one. DLC main aggressive, unaggressive requires Dawnguard and Dragonborn DLC. Enemy Civil War patrols added by this mod will not attack the player on site. So what you've got is essentially one for Civil War Overhaul, and then you have the main aggressive and the unaggressive and aggressive. 
So think about this. These are the battle ones, and you have ones that will attack you if you're not part of the same faction, and then you have ones that will not attack you if part of the same faction, but both of these have the battle component over the different forts. And then you scroll down to the next one, and you see the no battle twos. You have one that is aggressive and one that is unaggressive. So you have ones that will attack you based off your faction, but they do not battle over the different forts. And ones that do not battle over the different forts that are unaggressive. So you basically have to decide two basic things. Do you want to A, have them fight over the different forts? And B, do you want them to fight you all the time? So if you want them to fight over the forts, you want the DLC aggressive or the unaggressive. If you do not want battles, you want the no battles. If you then you have to decide aggressive versus non-aggressive. If you're a civil war overhaul, you'll have to go with this one, and then the aggression is handled by civil war overhaul. That's all there is to know about this one as far as that goes. But because it is so complicated, I wanted to take some time to explain it to you. It is quite a good mod. But let's show that to you in mod organizer. Downloads, what's going on over here? I don't know. The one I decided on is the battles with unaggressive behavior because I don't need to have be fighting the different patrols all the time. So when you double click to install this, it is a simple install, manual, meshes, textures, and immersive patrols to ESP. Click OK and activate it. And there is one plugin right there. I'm not going to go ahead and ludify that yet because there are no special rules on this. We'll just move on to the next mod. And this is a little mod that Stu from Couch Warrior TV and I really like. And it is kind of a unique one. It doesn't have a lot of downloads relative to the others, and it doesn't have a lot of endorsements. But what it does is it adds Dungeon Dragon type parties so they're mixed groups. And you see in this picture you have basically like a mage. He could be a paladin, that could be a warrior, and this could be a berserker, let's say. We don't know. And then you got berserker, cleric maybe, something else. But you get the idea. So they're mixed groups. Where immersive patrols added all the same thing. They're basically just Falmore or Stormcloak or Dawnguard. These are mixed groups. And you can see the different classes that are included here. Bard, berserker, cleric, fighter, mage, paladin, ranger, and rogue. Now, there are eight of these NPCs that can be added as followers, and there's a total of six total groups for a total of 28 characters in the game, and they kind of wander around, and there's the eight total followers. But it is kind of a neat little mod. So you'll see them primarily kind of coming in and out of town. You'll occasionally run into them in the cities, but it is kind of an interesting thing to see them in action because if you're running into them in the wild and you get in a little trouble or they get into a fight, You'll see the Berserker and let's say the Paladin rush up and do a couple things. Then you have a Mage sit back and then a Ranger fight. And the Bard, I never knew what they did anyways, but that's okay. I, mean, I don't need to know what they do. That's just kind of interesting that they're there. So I think this is a neat little mod. And I think that it's probably worth, you know, you checking out. There's only one file to do it. It adds six loosely D&D based parties with a total of 28 characters to the game. These parties travel through the world of Skyrim and make it feel more lively. Eight of the travelers can now be followers. I don't know how you decide if they're followers. I guess you just have to talk to them. So there's that. Download that with Manager. We'll go into Mod Organizer. And you can go ahead and see that download. Traveling D&D Parties. Double click to install. Manual. D&D Parties.esp. And activate it. In Plugins. We're just going to let Loot handle Immersive Patrols and D&D Parties. So whatever it wants to do is fine by me, and we'll just let it kind of decide its own. So on this, it didn't really know what to do to D&D parties. And Immersive Patrols, it pushed up a little bit. I would try to push these up a little bit higher and see what Loot thinks about it. But I always like letting Loot take a look at it first and then decide. So if you want to push them up higher in your own specific load order, I would probably try to get them in around inconsequential NPCs right about there since they're very similar. And that kind of goes along with what we've talked about as far as the left pane. 3D NPCs is going to need to be much higher up. Let's keep moving these up a bit because they need to be relatively high. 
Where was immersive citizens AI overhaul? I've lost it. Load order as far as it goes. So I always try to mirror these things a little bit. You can see it's being overwritten by the patch. Don't call me Dragonborn. We'll push it up with it just to have a little bit of organization as far as that goes. Inconsequential NPCs was a little bit higher up. It was right around immersive armors. We're going to go ahead and follow that same load order suggestion that they had, which was immersive weapons, inconsequential NPCs. You notice they don't overwrite anything, so it's not making a big difference, but I'm just thinking about organizational purposes. I always like to have my left panel kind of mirror the right panel a little bit, but that's it. Two other honorable mentions that I wanted to point out to you that I'm not be using just because this is the important thing to remember. You start adding a bunch more NPCs, it puts a lot of strain on your system. And the more NPCs you have, just like the more objects you have, you may start getting lags, you may start getting FPS drops. But I wanted to point these out to you because they are very interesting. This is HOP or Horses on Patrol Vanilla. And the only reason why they call it vanilla is because it doesn't include anything that requires a DLC. And what this mod does is add horse-mounted patrols to Skyrim. And you see they come with their own default type of armors, and they kind of ride around. And that was the uh, just the city patrols. And then you have an imperial patrol, right? They're wearing imperial armor, centurion armor, I guess. And what they'll do is they kind of wander around and do things. And then when they get into combat, they will dismount and fight and then mount back up. So you can see that, you know, none of the horses on patrol require any DLC. These are optional files that will help with the, you know, what type of armors they're wearing, but they're not required. So that's just it. If you want to learn more about them, you can view these videos. So the other one that's kind of a companion with that is Horses on Patrol Dawnguard Edition. This is by the same mod author, JR848. Of course, the first one was Mod 57727, and this is 50847. So this is like the Dawnguard version of it. So you have the Dawnguard guys, and you've got Huskies. This one is a little bit different because they are a mixed patrol of horsemen and dogs. It also adds a horse station or a stable inside of the Dongard area, whatever that uh, creek is. I forgot the creek out of the top of my head when I'm reading these things. Dayspring Canyon, there it is. So you can see some videos on it. It is kind of interesting to watch it. And I think that this may be a better option if you want just a few horses in. And let's say the Dongard, because they are so far on the map, they've only got one base. So they need to be on horses and they're going to take the dogs with you. There is a couple things. Let's talk about the files first, and I'll kind of explain what's going on. You have HOP DG1. This is three riders and four dog. So you have three riders and four dogs with each patrol. And then it, the one dog is three riders and one dog in each patrol. And then you have light. You have one rider and two dogs. So each of these are considered a main file. You know, you can just choose one. And then all of them have Dongard required. I would say if you're going to go ahead and do this, I would go ahead and get the light version. I'm still considering this as a possibility because it only adds one rider and two dogs in each patrol. It also has that non-essential leader, stable master merchant, and stable map marker. And it has that you know, stable inside of Dayspring Canyon. This may be a good choice. It adds a little more color to the game. It adds a writer from Dawnguard into it, so you can kind of, you know, have a little more interesting variety to the people you meet on the road. And it's kind of, you know, it's kind of a neat addition overall, where the one for vanilla is just basically horse patrols. It's not as interesting to me. This one is a good one. I think this is probably small enough if you choose the light version, and just call it a day. Simple install on this. Treat it the same as you would for D&D parties or immersive patrols. Nothing specific on that. So that's it for now, guys. Those are just some NPC mods that I particularly like. Some of the big ones, some of the medium-sized ones, and some little 
personal favorites that I like so well. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're enjoying the series. My name's Cal. I'm from Dirty Weasel, and I'm signing off. <laughs>